what is going on guys gals and everyone in between you are on the sidelines with the sideline guys i am chris i'm Derek. welcome back baby what what a time to be alive what a yes, time sir. to be alive man i'm so excited there's so much stuff going on it's only right that we jump right in with honestly celtics great one of your favorite players of all time <laughs> <laughs> and the biggest trade in NBA news right now, the Kyrie Irving trade. Uh, so before we get into the semantics, right, before we get into the nitty gritty of it, um, I think it's important to redirect all of your attention to the place that it matters most. And that's this humble abode of a channel we have right in front of you. So please make sure that you follow and subscribe on all social media platforms. That's OTS Media Co. And then OTS Media on YouTube. Uh, make sure you're showing your love and support for this great show. So we can keep all this awesome content coming to you guys at the spectacular rates that it has been. Um, with that being said, I'm also giving myself a shout out because why not, right? Yes, we're, going, we're going shameless plug right off the top. So make sure that you follow me on Twitter at Negron MMA as well as Chris Negron underscore. And Derek, please do the same. Yes, sir. You can follow me at Derek underscore OTS. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K, black way to spell it. Yes, sir. Just like that. Um, so, man. My my initial thoughts. So let let let's get out the details first, right? I'm getting yeah, ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, so the details of the trade are as follows: the Brooklyn Nets are receiving Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, as well as a 2027 second rounder, a 2029 first round pick, which is unprotected. Important mm -hmm. to mention that, and then a 2029 second round pick, and the Mavs are only getting Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris. So before we even talk about the the shit show that is the Kyrie Irving Express, I have to ask, how, how do you feel, like, storyline aside, right? What mm -hmm. you're getting asset-wise, how, how do you feel this trade sort of shakes out? Um, You know what? I really don't think that... Uh... Which which because they they had the opportunity to trade with the the Mavs, they had the opportunity to trade with Phoenix and then also the Lakers. Um, I somewhat feel like this one was probably like the better of the three options anyway. Um, I thought the Phoenix one was actually better. I know why you say that, but if you're looking at what you're getting in return. Chris Paul, who's who's out a good amount of time already, uh, at this point in his career, uh, and Drake Jay Crowder, who has not played all season, um, like I don't know what your return would be for now, and at this point, like right now, you're looking to appease Kevin Durant, <laughs> so I don't, I would assume that they want to be able to get some players that can get in there and 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 you know hold the fort down until Durant's back. Um, which at this point is really no need for him to rush back at yeah, all. Literally. I mean, I, I I know he's he's been trying to get back. Um, like I think right before the All Star game, but there's no need to do any of that. Um, I think I think it kind of worked out okay, but they they got a player that they should have never let go. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's what that's what threw me off with this too. Um. I think it's it's okay for them. I think for for Dallas, honestly, it's not like they're, you know, they're gonna be hurt from this move, honestly. Because I think even if Kyrie leaves, um, I think they're somehow. I think I forgot how how it is, but they're able to um to uh, uh clear out about like thirty million in cap space after this season with this uh, because of this move. So I mean, it technically works out pretty well for them because now you're putting yourself in a position to go out and get someone. Uh, that you can you can pay you know some good money to. Um, Kyrie wants a three year deal. Don't see that happening. I mean, and he wants a three year deal with either Dallas or whoever in the free agency, right? I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Even though technically with this whole issue, I can see why he wanted out of Brooklyn with this negotiation, but it's just not a good it's not a good look for him. It's not a good look for him because now you're you, you 
the three places you've already been, you've all you said, I plan on staying. I ain't going nowhere, baby. I ain't going nowhere. And, and so now your word means nothing to anyone. I So I don't see how, you know, Dallas or anyone else could give him a three-year deal. At this point, you're looking at Kyrie and almost like working off of one-year deals to me. Unless you're doing a a, a, a one-year and then like a, a team option or player option or something like that. I don't see how you, you give him anything more than that to be honest and it sucks because of, of the type of player that he is like the mm-hmm. caliber of player that he is that man should be on a four-year deal five-year deal making stupid money right he should be but he's messed himself up from a narrative perspective even if what happened in brooklyn on this negotiation um you look at it and say you know what it makes sense that he walks away um narrative is that's going to follow him now you know he, he was already stuck with this this uh uh whole thing with uh leaving boston so mm-hmm. i mean it is what it is and now you got kd to come out to brooklyn so now what happens to kd you know like everybody's looking at it like that too so i don't know man i think brooklyn got what they were like what was good for them in the moment but in the long term no for sure of course this doesn't this doesn't uh shape out to be a great deal for them I mean, yeah, man. I feel like I went back and forth on this so many times, like just th- thinking about the way it worked out. And sort of my initial reaction was like, man, the Nets, they had to do it, right? So you're never going to mm-hmm. get what you deserve when you have to do it, right? So mm-hmm. um, the, the market was already tainted even before the season started. So that's that's my thing, right? There was talks about this earlier, before the mm-hmm. season even started. They saw yeah. some success, right, under the new coach, Jacques Vaughn. And things sort of turned around. So that's why, for me, at least, I was kind of blindsided by this. Like, this happened very quickly. And mm-hmm. um, I, I know I know you mentioned the negotiations. If you know the specifics of that as far as why he was upset by what was being offered, um, I would love to hear more about that. But when, it, w- when I was thinking about the trade initially, right, from both sides, I'm like, man, the Nets didn't get at all close to what they should have got for him, right? Right, right. Um, but... When you're just considering the caliber of player, but with everything else, um, I think they, like you said, they did their due diligence and got the best deal they possibly could. Um, But I think the saddest thing is the, the Dallas Mavericks fans that actually are excited by this. Um, Mm -hmm. I think even if best case scenario, he's out there balling this year and y'all have a nice playoff run. uh, You still put yourself in a worse position, in my opinion, even if he Mm -hmm. resigns than if you went, uh, the other route or didn't do this trade and try to try to get other pieces. Um, I like the the team now. Don't get me wrong. I think Dallas. Christian Wood Christian Wood benefits from this a, a, a huge amount. Um, and and I'm interested to see how it works as far as um, the dynamic between him and Luca. I just feel like mm-hmm. I can't imagine a scenario with this new look Dallas team where Kyrie wants to resign a because of the way that that team already plays, right? And then B, like, even if he does resign, how does this really change your ceiling as, as, a, as a playoff contender? Like, I, I don't understand the move. It, it feels like a lateral move when you mm-hmm. could have waited the appropriate sort of time because no matter what, you're giving up that pick. Like, it's far yes. away, right? Everyone's like, it's yes. six years from now, so it doesn't matter. That fucking matters, especially when you know, as an organization, y'all plan to try to be contending this entire time, right? Yeah. So yeah. having those picks are important. I don't know, man. I feel like they gave up more than you should have considering who he is. But when you consider the player, it's such a weird trade because if you're just considering the talent, it's a trade that should have never been done. Like it's a trade mm-hmm. that the value isn't there for the kind of player you're getting. So Mm. it's a big crapshoot, man, for Dallas fans. I hope it works out, but uh, there's no reason why I would ever (laughs) consider uh, Kyrie joining my team a good thing (laughs) after all the things he's been going through the last couple years. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that they do anything significant in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not you're not I mean, they made the western conference finals last season right so yeah but i don't personally 
I just don't see it right now. I don't see it. Like, it's not like your defense got any better. Mm-hmm. Right? If anything got worse. Um, hmm? I said, if anything, it got worse. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. I think, but I think this helps Luca for sure. Um, In what way? I'm curious. It, in terms of being able to spread the floor a little bit, right? Because Kyrie is a very good three-point shooter. Very good. My question about it, like on paper, it should, it should, it should be good. Like on paper, if you're looking at this, it should be one of those things where you're like, they can easily make it to the Western Conference Finals again. Like it's it's not, it shouldn't be a, a far-fetched idea on paper, but I don't feel like this is gonna be a team that does that. And my question is because I've seen it like Kyrie demands the ball, right? And he has to be the second option. He is not the first option. So I didn't see like when it comes to playoffs, look at, look at Kyrie's uh, stats over the last couple of years in the playoffs for the last couple of years. It has not been that great. A big drop off like, from regular season, huge drop off, and like there was big expectations for him and and KD, right? Look what happened yeah. when when they were able to both play healthy healthy in the playoffs. They got swept by the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see that. I can't look at this team and say they should be able to do something that Kyrie and KD couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't see that. And I mean, Brooklyn's already uh, uh, kicking themselves for trading for for Ben Simmons because look what Harden is doing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um. So I, I don't, just look I don't what know. Ben Simmons is doing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even I mean, need to look at how Harden's doing. <laughs> <laughs> look, but defensively, defensively, Simmons is still a good player. But you're literally only playing him, paying him to play defense at this point. Right, yeah. so, and in today's Brooklyn, NBA, players like that aren't even valuable. Like Tony Allen types don't exist. Like let, let's be honest, well, see, that's, they don't. That's the thing you're you're looking at. You're talking about like high caliber defensive players. Marcus Smart got paid fifty, I think fifty two million, fifty eight million. Marcus Smart can shoot, <laughs> and yes, he can shoot. But you know when he got paid. We were everyone was still like kind of wondering, can you shoot that consistent? Because I think it, I think the year the the season he got paid, that prior one, I believe it. If I, I could be wrong about his timeline, but I believe it was the year prior to when he just started shooting like consistently from the three. He's been getting better every year, um, uh, since then. But I mean, when he first came into the league, you weren't looking at him was, like he was a shooter. It was really bad. It was brutal. Like you were holding your breath whenever he would pull up from three. You, you um, get mad, like why? <laughs> why oh, why are you doing this? For sure, yeah, yeah. Like what the hell, man? <laughs> but like Simmons isn't doing that. You're right, Simmons is not doing that. But I mean, when you're talking about you're only paying this guy to play defense, and look where you are. You know what I'm saying? I don't see that being a, a, a great payout for them. So I guess at this point, you have to see what you can do to make some moves. Like, of course, everybody's saying that, you know, there's no trade interest in Ben Simmons, and there should not be trade interest for Ben Simmons. There shouldn't have been trade interest for Ben Simmons when Brooklyn did it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, right now, Brooklyn got the best deal that they can get, but I don't see Brooklyn doing anything great, and I don't I don't know that Dallas is going to do anything great in the playoffs. Because at the, at the end of the day, we're going to look at Dallas – for the rest of the season, right? The rest of the regular season, I should say, and say, okay, they're playing this way at this high level. They're easily one of the top freight favorites in the West. I like I guarantee that's gonna be one of the narratives, right? Once the playoffs hit, watch what Kyrie does. It, it's it's a tale oldest time at this point. And it really sucks because for some reason he's not been able to like flip the switch on. Since he won a championship with Kyrie or with a uh, with LeBron, I, I don't I don't get that I don't I, I, that part I don't understand. So we'll see, we'll see. But I doubt they're going to do anything in the West. Be- like you know, it's just a pattern. I would say I would say roster wise, they have a better roster than that Nets team, right? 
just just mm-hmm. as a full mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I agree with you 100. percent I think this doesn't do for them what you would want it to do when you give up those assets, right? And and right. don't get me wrong. Once again, these are assets that are far ahead in the future, so mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt as bad, especially. But no matter what, if he turns around and doesn't resign with you guys, like this feels like a huge waste of time because technically yeah. you could have wrote out the season the same way anyway. Maybe shop, yeah. It, it, maybe shop uh, Spencer Dinwiddie to someone else. Get get another piece. And then find mm-hmm. yourself in the same situation anyway and not have mm-hmm. to give up those picks. So I don't know. I mean, one question, you know, I have too is also like, if this doesn't work, what does what does that say for Luca? Like, is he gonna start looking to move elsewhere? If That's they continue, to, you know, not do anything, or is he willing to stay and 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 battle it out? You know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, considering, and I hope this doesn't sound ignorant, but like this, this feels like the first season where he is fully locked in, right? As a competitor. Right, right. And I think he has been like ticked off about shit that isn't about basketball. Like, and you could kind of tell, like, even when he's playing, like there's, there's a little bit of frustration, like when things Mm -hmm. don't work out with certain players making the play or following through on the play, uh, there's already Mm -hmm. a frustration there. So I think that's something interesting to monitor. I doubt that it'll be like a nasty breakup if it becomes one. Right. I just I just find that very hard to believe. Like I I feel like everyone loves him so much that it, it's kind of mm-hmm. like you can't really fuck that up as an organization. So like you got to get it early and I think doing stuff like this is a part of that, right? Like it's a part mm-hmm. of the 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 facade of doing the right thing for your superstar. But at the end of the day, um, especially if he doesn't re-sign, man, I, I think this is super short-sighted. And yeah. it, it let's say we live in a world where he doesn't re-sign. Now mm-hmm. free agency comes around and it's all or nothing again. Like if y'all mm-hmm. fuck up again in free agency, he is definitely uh gonna be trying to dip out. So yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean I, I don't I've... see a championship window even with this move. Like I, I really I don't. don't. I, I didn't expect them to make the conference finals last year either. And they aren't performing the way they were last year up to this point. Yeah. So man, um it's just so uh it's such a weird like Kyrie is the most <laughs> it's gonna sound ignorant too, but the most 2K player in existence. Like the <laughs> idea of him being on your team sounds so great. Yeah, but yeah. In practice, uh, everything just kind of falls apart at the seams. Uh, Before we move on, though, I got to ask you, do you think after this contract, so the contract he's currently on, do you Mm -hmm. think that Ben Simmons uh, gets a contract in the the NBA? Bro, he's got two more years on his deal. Do you think he ends up in the league in three years? (laughs) (laughs) I think if he does, it's strictly for his defense. It's strictly for his defense, um, which is weird because you have to be able, you have to be willing to play him on the wing, right? Um, I don't know. To me, I'm looking at this, this, the rest of the season, and then and at least next year as like an audition for him. Like that's what he's got to start uh, 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 looking at it as is this is an audition for your next contract and i don't see him i put it like this i don't know that he couldn't get another deal but it's not going to be with a great team one it's not going to be the same role it's not going to be the same role too and are you okay let me ask you this are you bringing him off the bench you have to in my opinion no choice right i'm shocked that they aren't doing it now it it has to be a funny thing yeah, because that's gonna be another part of it. I like is he playing for vet minimum or is he playing now? No. vet minimum? No, 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 He's... no, no. Next contract. Yeah. Is is that vet minimum or is that above like right above it? Because I'm not willing to sign myself to Ben Simmons for multiple years either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that of the big names that Brooklyn has had in the last year. The only ones you would really you would be willing to sign yourself to for multiple years, 
like blindly are KD and, and Harden. That's it. That's it. I can't I can't blindly sign myself to, to Kyrie and I can't blindly sign myself to Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it depends on what team you're talking about that could use that defense um off the bench because you're not you gotta pair him with like three shooters. If you yeah. give him two to three shooters with a night with a quality big Ben, like off your off your bench, Simmons will be stupid. Mm-hmm. He he would go he would go off defensively. He'd go off for sure. But it's kind of hard to switch him because, again, you need to you you have to play offense, and you know as even soon if, as the defensive possession's over, as soon as the defensive <laughs> possession is over, now it's five on four. It's a it's a it's it's a handicap match. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make sense. It it, it shouldn't be. It and credit be. to Brooklyn, bro. They're trying to get him involved. Like it's not they're like trying, yeah. it's yeah. not like they they want him to fail. Like they're trying very yeah. hard to put him in a system where he's gonna succeed. And it's so bad, man. The post ups, yeah. the 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 jump hooks. It is terrible. Like your your front nip in the rim on jump hooks, bro. Like yeah, <laughs> that's a no no. <laughs> like that that is bad. So yeah, man, I I don't think he ends up anywhere. Honestly, I think after this contract, I'll be I'll be really surprised. Cause even, and and I mean, are you really in the league if you're a backup defensive player? Like, are you really considered to be in the league? Yes, but it depends on also depends on where you are. Because to be honest, to be honest, the Kings aren't a joke team uh, team this year, right? Not at all. So so imagine. And it, 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 but but imagine if he was if he was on like the Kings right now, just how better they would be defensively off with their second unit. You know what I'm they saying? They have those players at the guard position already, though. <laughs> they they well, have those same the players. Wing. You have to, you just play him on the wing. But but I feel the like wing. they can't afford to do that when you have Mitchell no, you there can't. too. You yeah, can't, you can't. You can't. You can't. I, I know what you mean, though. I, I think there is value. But the, if there the is value is, there. It just depends on how many minutes you give him. Yeah. Because honestly, how many minutes like, he can earn is really what bro, it's about. That too. Because think about it too. Like playoffs, like regular season, he's gonna he'll be in the rotation. But it's is will will he be in the in the rotation during the playoffs? I say no. He ain't finishing. Definitely no. ain't finishing the game. Yeah. No, I say no unless it's a blowout. Because I don't, I don't see how like you can't just play defense. You have to, you have to play a little bit of offense, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's my point. Like, well why with... are you even there? If come playoff well... time, you are <laughs> now... you ride in the back of the bench. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say, with like when Gordon Hayward was in Boston, right, and he was still hurt. One of the things that they did, um, especially in a bubble, uh, was was uh, they util- they utilized him to facilitate the ball. Right, like you're not looking to him to score every like all the time. You're not looking for him to to be a magician on defense, but you you need you had him out there for facilitating uh for for facilitating the offense. Maybe maybe that's one thing Ben Simmons can do. Damn, offensively. Mm-hmm. But that's I don't I don't know I don't know. Just a a broke man's. LeBron <laughs> off the bench that that never that never fixed the jump shot. Yeah, that that's a tough. Nah, thing. see that's the thing though. You gotta you've gotta want to fix it to be fixed. I think he has wanted to. I just, I just think it's nah, not working out. <laughs> I don't think so because if you if if from high school people have been telling you you need to shoot the ball and you have literally just like ignored that. And your whole thing was defense and 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 dunking and assisting, you know, like once you're now afraid to even like do anything in the post. Yeah. Your whole offensive game is gone. But every <laughs> every offseason, that's all that's talked about. That you, you see yes. I don't know because everybody loves jump seeing these what? videos. Everybody loves seeing these videos and on Instagram, and, and they want to talk about how great of a shooter he is in the in the summer. The season is over in the summer, bro. Like it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Unless you want to be a summer league uh, uh, MVP. Shit, 
that might be out of the cards at this point. I mean, well, yeah, at this point it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is crazy. That that's another another career story where it's like the the biggest what ifs between him and Kyrie. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how this became roasting Ben Simmons. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but... <laughs> nah. <laughs> but but Kyrie Kyrie um at this point, I think. Let me ask you this because this is something I've never I haven't heard anybody talk about. Prior to all of this stuff with Boston, and I mean even when he was in Boston, but prior to all of this like noise where you're looking at Kyrie as like staying on that path dude is a hall of famer right do you think that any of this hurts his chances of being a hall of fame player at the end of his career that is a good question i personally think if he has what i assume should be at least another four productive seasons in the nba right another four all-star level seasons I think he should be a Hall of Famer, no doubt. But I don't know. I don't know. Once again, banking on his future in any capacity feels uh, like like the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Um, I would say if he isn't a Hall of Famer, it's a fucking crime and it's all his fault. So I'm not going to feel too bad about it. Uh, but me personally, I think career-wise and performance-wise, he's never going to dip that low for that to be out of the question because already – like I feel like he's already in that place with the amount of All Star games he he's had, and the seasons he has had. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's a lot of big talk about all the other stuff, but when he's actually on and he he is a hundred percent an All Pro player, right? So I don't know, man. I I think if he doesn't end up in the Hall of Fame, it's a it's a tragedy, and he robbed himself honestly. I think I think he would do it to himself, but to be honest, I'm not. If he never makes it into the Hall of Fame, I don't know that I'm mad at it. And it's it, because if you're looking at the postseason, like again, the last few years, are we taking his championship and and combined with stats and saying he's a Hall of Famer, or are we saying like look at what he did in the regular season and look at what he did in the postseason? Like the postseason has to count for something, right? And if we're talking about guys that are going into a Hall of Fame, like I almost feel like the criteria has to be like clearly defined for a Hall of Fame. And to me, postseason means a lot. I was gonna say under that criteria, there's a lot of guys that's not making it. I, I want to make right. that clear. No, 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 no. But I'm saying like not even just like you you may pass the first round, second round, and you got into the finals. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about statistically what you did in the postseason. Statistically, what Kyrie has done in the postseason for the last few years has been trash. And my concern is that we're we're like ignoring that and saying this championship with LeBron puts him there automatically. That would be my concern with that move. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's not a Hall of Fame level player. He is. Like, handles are the best handles ever to me. Right? But what does all that mean if you're not putting all that together in the postseason? For sure. I agree with that. I just feel like so many people have lived off of doing exactly that and have been able to come out on the other side and have Hall of Fame type careers without mm -hmm. having that. So... I think what makes it different though, and I agree with you about this part is like, there's a statistical drop off that you can very realistically see, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's not like the stat change is that of a uh, all-star and a bench player. Like, it's not like he's going out there in the playoffs and scoring six points a game. Like it's not that big of a difference. Um, and mm -hmm. I think ultimately, especially with his longevity, even just if the season ends now and he retires, I think he still has uh there's still a debate on whether or not he he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It's so that's debate. why I was saying yeah. after if he has four more years where he's still playing up to this level, which I would assume he should be able to at his age, right? Um there's no doubt that he should be in the Hall of Fame in my opinion. I um, question if he wants to play that long. 
Really? I question if he wants to play that long. Because to be honest, if you're like, I get he's seeking that three year deal or whatnot. And, you know, like, he wants the money. He wants to be paid like the level of player he is. But when we've been talking about Kyrie almost every few months for the last two to three years. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's not like it's just like, you know, happenstance type of stuff. It's, it's never like, yo, Kyrie is balling. <laughs> yeah. It's never like that. Yeah. It's he's he's saying or doing something stupid. Mm-hmm. And nothing to harm his 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 playing style or anything like that, or or his ability to play in the league. But it's just stupid stuff. You know, it's 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 the whole thing of trying to stop the, the bubble after he couldn't go and play. Or or you know, uh going on and 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 kind of causing a distraction every couple of months. Like it just it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I'm gonna start saging shit mid show from now on. Like <laughs> bro, that it's just it's it's stuff that makes no sense. He stomped on 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 Lucky, right? And ever since mm-hmm. he did that, he's 0 and 10 against the Celtics. Yeah. Regular season and postseason. You see what I'm saying? Like you're flipping fans off and and doing like it's it's stuff that just doesn't make any sense yeah right so that's what's honestly for the last year year and a half i've been kind of wondering if he even wants to play long term Mm -hmm. you know if you want to if you want to just earn the money so that you can go ahead and start investing into your next career and stuff like that i have nothing but respect for that but let's not act as if you are the victim here that's my whole problem with with Kyrie. When it, and 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 I think this situation is different because again, like, okay, so what happened with Brooklyn was that they wanted um they wanted to add extensions uh with with uh he, they wanted to do the extension with Kyrie but with guarantee stipulations. And I don't think like I don't what? know I don't I I can't I don't it's it's on the athletic I don't have an account with them so I can't see what. The, the full thing is but mm-hmm. there was there were stipulations i believe what i read uh the other day was that um some of the stipulations uh, uh some of the stipulations required i think making a championship run or something like that or making it to the finals or something um which i'm assuming that wasn't you know great for for negotiations so for sure. i can i can understand that right but the last three years to me like overshadows just that one thing right for sure so that's why i, I just question whether he wants to actually play basketball like long term mm-hmm. you know like do your thing i like if he doesn't want to i'm i'm glad for him if he does i'm glad for him I like I like watching Kyrie play, mm-hmm. right? But it's like the 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 distractions that he brings with him in terms of all the these weird narratives, and then you want to yell, you know, you want to argue with people about X Y Z, and get mad when they ask you questions about X Y Z. Like it's 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 tiring at this point. It's tiring at this point. I I am as tired of talking about Kyrie as I am of tired of, of, of talking about LeBron. Yeah, and and I found it so funny that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you how you felt about a storyline of this trade being LeBron being in his feels about him not going to LA. And real quick, I I and we'll move on from this after this last part because yeah. I know we've been on this for a while. Um, I'm happy that Joe Sy was able to make the decision to say. <laughs> I'm not, whatever the fuck we do, we are not sending you to the Lakers, uh, which I find <laughs> hilarious <laughs> because he's funny. like, I know that's what you want and I'm not going to do that for you. Um, I'm glad they were able to work that out and so, and make that work. And then LeBron, yeah. LeBron's just crying in the background about it. Um, I just, man, when it, when it comes to this, like you said, I'm tired of it. I think in today's day and age though, as far as like playing in the NBA and being an NBA player, if you don't maximize the amount of years you play, like you left money on the table <laughs> and that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and that is ridiculous at, at this yeah. point with the amount of money th- that there is to be made. So I can't imagine a scenario where 
he and all all players in his position ride it out until he isn't being offered a contract. Like I would imagine that's where you are, even if mm-hmm. mentally there's a grind and stuff that not not a lot of fans take into consideration, which is something that really makes LeBron's greatness um something to behold, especially in this latter part of his career. Because there's a mm-hmm. real cog in that machine that doesn't exist in a lot of other athletes. So I, I agree yeah. with you. That's a very good point. But I don't I don't think I've seen that yet. I don't think I've ever felt like he's lost a step and had cool, to LeBron. adjust for it. No, Kyrie. Kyrie. And had to adjust mm-hmm. for it. I think his game isn't one that easily makes that transition. So I feel like that's something that will be pretty evident when it when it starts happening. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think we got at least another two years before we start seeing that. Um so yeah, I would say my if I had a line it right, I would say the over under should be somewhere like three and a half more years that he's playing in the NBA. But but yeah, I would say there's probably three teams in those three and a half years. <laughs> he's oh, yeah. probably going Too everywhere. Minimal. Too minimal. Yeah. I at this point it almost seems like and this sucks because there are certain players you don't want to see become a journeyman. You want to mm-hmm. see them stay where they are, right? Or where they were drafted, or whatever. Like I like seeing when guys when guys are able to uh, build where they're drafted, and and you know succeed. Now, if if the team is just stupid, like their front office literally doesn't care about winning or whatever, and then you decide to go somewhere else, cool, get it. But like I don't like seeing this hop, and I think we're we're I don't know that we're we're gonna. Uh, I think if we see any other players actually stay where they're drafted. It, it's just a handful. I think right now, who would you say? Luca, Tatum, Giannis, Jokic. Yep. <laughs> Those might be Trey, uh, Trey Young's about uh, Embiid, to dip. So yeah. Embiid, yeah, yeah, Young, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Embiid, but I think like you're talking about a couple of guys that might do that in terms of, like the elite players that will will do that. Kyrie. Kyrie is an elite player when he's on. I don't like the the switch because it, like you know as a player this dude is just he's he's elite. But I think that I think the 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 distractions of narratives and all that stuff over the last couple of years have have taken away from his uh from his legend, honestly. Sure. I, I really do. I really do think that. And I miss you know, when he... when he was known as Uncle Drew. Like that was a that was an oh, era that that Uncle doesn't Drew exist was anymore. <laughs> yeah, like dude. And <laughs> now he's Unc. You feel me? He went from Uncle Drew to Unc. The Unc at the nah, bottom. Nah, he's tolerate. just Drew now, bro. He's just Drew. Like you want to hang out with the, with the Unc. I don't want to hang out with Drew. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is at this point, you know, and and, and I don't like that for him. I, I, I like sure. aside from the stupidity that happened with Boston and everything like that. I like I actually love watching him play, and like you can't help but see him like Jesus. Yeah, like even when you you're, get a couple of those moments him, a game. <laughs> yes, but I mean, even when when your team is playing against him, like you're just like, oh my god! You look at him in amaze- in amazement, like you do with with Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. And they're they're for different reasons, right? Steph is for the shooting, Kyrie is for the handles, and you just love watching him be able to break down the defense and everything like that. But I don't know, I don't know. Honestly, like, I would say this: I want to end on some positivity. Like nothing will make me happier than for the Mavs to be a great fit, and he balls for the next. And then we don't have any of this shit to talk about anymore. Like where it, it's not a Kyrie question. Anymore. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that, that is the best uh the best uh timeline, but I don't I think we live far from it and he'll probably be a free agent again this offseason. And well, well once again, I think this is gonna prove a lot and we'll end here for real this time. Um no you don't have to go into a deep explanation, but a surface level, if you could pick one NBA team where he would be the best fit, what would that be for you? And the reason why I ask is because when I thought about it. I didn't have an answer. And it was only because of the other stuff, not because of the player. Because there's a lot of teams that could benefit from having the player, Kyrie. Uh, but Bro. whether or not that exists for more than six months on a consistent basis is a crapshoot. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't. No team comes to mind. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. And no team comes to mind. I mean, of, of course, you're talking about like, you know, his his spectacular handles and stuff like that. For sure, like anybody would want that on their team. But uncertainty, right? Like it's the uncertainty. Does he want to be here? Does he? And and then now you got to move. You got to move accordingly to just like the hypotheticals with Kyrie. That doesn't seem fair. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like, especially if you're sure. pairing him with another superstar. So now what what kind of what, what does this do to Luca? Like in terms of like wanting to stay there. Because if yeah. Kyrie stays for if if Kyrie, let's say Kyrie stays for three years. We've seen what happened in, in Cleveland, which honestly I don't know if that was totally his fault. We saw what happened with Boston, saw what happened with Brooklyn. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work out, mm-hmm. right? Only one player that he's teamed up with, he's been able to get a championship with. Like superstar player, elite player that he's teamed up with, he's been able to get a championship with, and that was with LeBron. And that's when he was number two. But anytime he's been number one, he hasn't done anything. My yeah. question is: Is he going to be able to go back to that number two position because he's still a number one player? That's yeah, the level. He's clearly number he two on the Mavs. Oh, he's clearly yeah. number two. He's clearly number two. But can he accept that? Yeah. Can he accept that? And 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 now you're looking at a time where, like, I know what we saw in Boston, especially in that series against Milwaukee. He didn't care about how bad he shot, which to a certain degree he shouldn't, but to a certain degree he should, right? He didn't care how bad he played. It was just like, I'll be better. And then he was never better, you know? So that's what I'm wondering. If that kind of thing happens in Dallas, does that push Luka out the door? To me, it's like, this is Luka's team. So so that's even it crazier is. to even imagine. Like, it and, and is, I think that's, that was that's a narrative team. to watch for. For sure, yeah. that's a narrative to watch for. Like, whether or not it becomes about the Kyrie show <laughs> in Dallas and whether that affects his relationship to the organization. I tend to feel like he's already so tight with everyone. And like, this is clearly his team that like, if, mm-hmm. if he sees it going South, he'll just be like, get, get him out of here and we'll figure it out on the off season. Yeah. I think that's most likely to happen, but yeah, those all, all fair questions and stuff that we will we won't get the answer to until we have it. Uh, but I, yeah. I got this weird feeling like um, this is nowhere near the end of the downward spiral of Kyrie Irving. Um, yeah. But with that being said, we're still in the midst of the trade deadline, right? We got f- three days left. Um, so I, I got some names here. L- let's have some fun, right? Yes, sir. So I, I'm asking two questions here and they, they can have different answers. They can be the same, but I have a a list of players. So for each player, I'm going to ask of you and of myself to say who we think they are the best fit for as far as a team that will benefit the most from having them. And then the second question is where they actually end up on Friday. So um, (laughs) this is going to be fun. We got some nice names here. Uh, So our first one, Sir Thickums himself, Kyle Lowry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so I am going to say that, that this is a tough one I would say as far as places where he would be the most welcomed right now nothing honestly really comes to mind um Couple, couple that just popped in Chicago, Toronto, but these are places where they got situations where people are trying to leave. So you gotta fit, yeah. you gotta fit those holes somehow. Um, mm-hmm. There isn't like a contender that I'm looking at that I'm like, man, if the Lakers got Kyle Lowry, like no, there's oh, yeah. no team that's gonna really benefit to that level. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna say I'll go best upside Toronto. And where he actually ends up, I, I think he doesn't get traded. I'm going to say he stays with the Heat. What about you? I think he stays with the Heat, but I think I think what could possibly happen is the Lakers 
trade Westbrook to Miami for for Lowry, um, just to maybe appease LeBron. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do anything. Like that's a lateral move too. Um, yeah. I don't know that there's an actual team that. I mean, there's teams that could use him for sure. Maybe Milwaukee. Um, that's a good one. Maybe, oh, maybe Philadelphia, because uh, Cork, 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 uh, Cormas, Corkmas, uh, he just uh demanded a trade uh today. So stole my thunder with that one. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so so maybe that's one. Maybe 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 that's that's a guy that that uh you go you you know you make a small trade Lowry for for Corkmas and see what happens with that. I don't know that it does much, but. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's happier heat, there. I don't think the Heat are motivated to make a deal like that, but I I'll agree. I think either. there's a lot of places where it'll be like, hey, it's nice to have Kyle Lowry here, um, but nowhere that really screams out like, man, if they get Kyle Lowry, like this can change their season. Like I I don't feel like that about anybody. What, what about your Thunder? No, we we have no need right now. This is this is the the trial run of, um we're we're gonna we're gonna tank again but Mm -hmm. um we're gonna let our guys do as much as we can exactly this that's where we are this season if chet was was playing i think we would actually be trying to contend um Mm -hmm. but at this point i've noticed rotation wise and things like that it seems like they're just trying to get as much reps for the young guys as possible and sort of let them find their feet um they should so I don't like the fit in that way, but as a veteran in the locker room, hell yeah, I'd love to have Kyrie, uh, Kyle Lowry. And we have so many assets to trade out that it, it wouldn't hurt us either. I just yeah, feel like feel you it. could go a better route in free agency as far as getting a veteran presence like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I like that. Next up, Pascal Siakam. Um, I know that there's a recent rumor that says he's not going to be traded, but uh, yeah. might as well include him in these talks nonetheless. Um there's a lot of places that could benefit from having him like a a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say my favorite, and this might come out of nowhere to you. um, Get him to the Pacers, keep him in the East, keep him in the East, Mm. make, make that the first team where you actually have great wing players, great guards and an actual front court in 2023. There's not Mm -hmm. many teams that actually play a full front court for the entirety of the game. Uh, it's mostly like it becomes the guard show. Uh, a lot of second rotations are just wings and guards. And then one mm. uh, power forward of five years ago that is now a center. Uh, that'll be a really <laughs> fun experiment, in my opinion, to have them around a whole bunch of people that can A, shoot, and B, aren't selfish. Um, mm. And then having a shot blocker to to depend on as well. So you're not that defensive prowess. I, I just feel like that does a lot uh, for their team. Um, as far as whether or not he stays or leaves, I, I think he ends up um, staying with Toronto as well, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't see him leaving. Um, I wouldn't mind him in Boston, to be honest. Um, coming off the bench or something like that. I wouldn't mind that, but I don't see that happening. I know? was about to say, I can't imagine coming off the bench. <laughs> I really can't. It's not happening. It's not happening. Not unless they decide to, well, never mind. <laughs> He's going to have to have a... Uh, yeah, a, a, a ayahuasca moment in the woods and yeah a, a come yeah. to self moment for sure but but i mean if you take that that same approach as the uh brogdon took you never mm-hmm. know so but i i doubt he comes off the bench though that's a good shout brogdon has been balling he deserves the credit next up zach levine this is another guy who recently they said he isn't going to get traded i'll let you take the lead on this one uh what do you think uh i don't think he gets traded I think that they need to do something though, because Lonzo is um Lonzo ain't coming back, bro. <laughs> why why you not this say year? That? Not this year. He ain't coming mm-hmm. back. I mean, whatever happened, whatever the knee injury that it was that he had has been so significant that he's not even been able to like do anything mm-hmm. yet. And that was I think that injury was at the beginning of last season. Last year. Yeah. So like it's like I don't know. I would not mind seeing if they did trade Levine, which I don't think they will. 
I could almost see them putting him with uh with the other ball. Ooh, and Charlotte. Goal of Charlotte. Team up with Lamelo. That would be a very that'd be a a a, a good show to see. I don't For know sure. if they would do anything, but that'd be a good show. Um, I would assume Terry Rozier would be gone, in that, excuse me, in, in the move like that. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't see him moving uh, Levine though. For sure, that that yeah. fucks up the spacing. But like, as far as two K, that it sounds does. fun. That oh, sounds yeah, fun. No, as fuck. him and Miles Turner, uh, Miles Bridges, <laughs> just just catching lobs. Like it, it'll Bro. be it'll be great. Honest, see that that's how Charlotte is run though. Charlotte is run like a two K team. That's why I could yeah. see something like that taking place. You know, you go you, Jordan you, smoking you, cigars in between Jordan, the side quests. That's great. He gets his, yeah, he gets his cigars and his wine. Like he'll be fine. You know, like they're not competing for championships. For it's sure. weird. For sure. Yeah, I think he stays in Chicago too. Um, I'm trying to think about where his presence is most needed right now, and I'm having a hard time. Um, Miami. the Nets, the Nets, I would say, the Nets. yeah, that's a good one, good shout. Uh, but he ends up staying in Chicago. Uh, so we we shall move on with that one. Uh, <laughs> hilarious <laughs> that you stole my thunder with it earlier, but I, I put him right <laughs> here in between these two on purpose. For Khan, Crook Maz, I'm not gonna hold you when I saw the trade request. I went full Snoop Dogg meme. Like, who? Who? <laughs> like, that was... Remember last year when we played that game and I was like, oh, uh, yeah, do these people yeah. exist? I, yeah. I wouldn't have gotten this one. I didn't even know who the fuck this was. So shout out to you yeah. for even knowing. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Who? What, what do you think? Um, I, I don't see it happening. I don't see... Actually, hold up. I just thought of something. Levine to to Phoenix for Jay Crowder and Paul. Would you do that? Ooh. Mm, you need a point guard. That's that's two shooting guards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is two shooting but, guards. <laughs> but I would, they, I forgot the name of that guy they have now. But um, oh, they just signed. That's a uh to a two-way contract that dude is a baller and he's i think he's a point guard for them um they might have i'm sleeping and may, maybe son's basketball you probably yeah but maybe maybe you get cork miles in that deal yeah maybe that's what do, i'm saying if you get cork miles three, and levine that's yeah and you're levine, in business. Do a three team trade or something like that and and you work something out that that would work for phoenix for sure mm -hmm. for sure so, i like that a lot let me i'm, I'm gonna plug that in so two for one Right in that, I I do I do that. So, do you think he actually moves, or is he staying? No, it's not happening. But I I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. But <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Phoenix dream. Nice. Phoenix dream is nice. dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. This is this is high stakes here. This feels like the only one that has a chance of moving. Does it? No. I, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I don't know what LA is expecting to happen. You can't get rid of all your your assets and then get mad when you can't trade for anyone. For real, dudes is throwing out low ball trades that you do on like, my GM. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna work out, bro. <laughs> yeah, like you turn the cap space off and all that. Like you, you turn everything off and just yeah, force a trade. It's not happening. It's I'll not give happening. you my twenty thirty six first rounder. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, can't do it. Can't do it. So nah, Westbrook stays. Uh, I think is this is this is the final year of his contract, right? Yes. Thank God. Hey, don't talk shit. He has been the lone bright spot of that Lakers team. I know. In my he, opinion. Doesn't, he doesn't deserve this. That's why I, yes, I yes, thank yes. God because I want to see Westbrook go somewhere where he can flourish and actually contend for a championship. Right? Like I mm -hmm. think he deserves that. I think he deserves that. I understood the reason why pushing your way to LA when you did it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have done that, but I understood why he did it. He was in Washington. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. Kuzma about to do the same shit. Yeah, I get it. But no, he ain't going nowhere. Not right now. Why? Why? I mean, you're not getting anything for him. 
Just let him yeah, walk. Yeah, I was going to say, who's, who's going to trade for him first? No one's yeah. trading for him. That's just mm-hmm. not happening. So let him walk, you know. Um, I, I hope he's able to go somewhere. Maybe he goes to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, if this was last week, my answer would have 100% been the Nets. Uh, but those dominoes have already fell. Uh, oh, so yeah, yeah. Sad, yeah, sad times for the guy. I, I was, I would like you said, I was hoping for some uh, silver lining here, but we're not getting it. Uh, all right, last two: Kelly Olynyk, the Jazz great. <laughs> uh, I think it's possible he comes to Boston, but I think it's possible he comes to Boston with Vanderbilt. Both of them. That's interesting. I, I think so. My my opinion. Who would y'all give up in that equation? Peyton Pritchard's out the door. Damn. Grant Williams is out the door. Yeah, bro. The way this like, season hasn't worked out like last season, huh? It's not. And and to be honest, it's weird because there's so many bright spots with his play, but the dark spots are like pretty dark man like it's like, Draymond comp bro that's like, when, when your comp is Draymond it makes sense it's but see here's the thing though like it's like dumb stuff it's dumb stuff with with Grant mm-hmm. so as a basketball player though I think he's phenomenal I just don't think I don't think he's going to get the money he wants and yeah, I think sense. the Celtics I think the, the the Celtics have a better reason to trade him now than to just walk, let him walk in the door, because Miami wants him bad, right? That try that drives up the asking price. You trade Grant Pritchard, um, I don't even know this as Jackson. I forgot his first name. I dude never plays. Um, you trade him and whatever draft picks that Utah wants. Get rid of him. Go ahead. Pritchard already went on. Um, whose podcast was that? Oh, I forgot who's whose podcast he was on like last week or two weeks ago, but he was just on a show recently and he wants a bigger role next year. And it sounds like he's prepared to leave Boston. Yeah. Like he's not getting he that getting in Boston. <laughs> he's not getting it. Um I think I think Boston is past the time of small guards that can't play defense. They're past that. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have smart white. Uh, um, um. Oh my God! Why am I blanking on names right now? Brogdon. Brogdon, thank you. You have these guys that are in rotation. It's your team, man. Bro, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, we just talked about them too. But you have these guys in rotation that um that Pritchard can't break. He can't get into the rotation unless someone's out or you know hurt or whatever. Which was why I like him there. But he wants he wants like to be a starter or like the number like the, the first backup he like he wants big minutes and he mm-hmm. should he's a he's a baller but and he can shoot very well but i don't see him cracking the rotation in boston like that so trade those guys go ahead like it, we're at the point now where you know everybody wants that championship it's not you know playing nice and 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 hey i just like you so let's keep you no mm-hmm. get olenic get vanderbilt trade these two guys out uh three guys really and uh whatever pick and and, and keep it moving like it's, sure. it's just it's simple it's simple so you think he actually ends up with the celtics or does he stay with the jazz i think he does yeah nice yeah yeah, yeah that i mean i i feel and i feel this in my heart of hearts man there's nothing that really rallies that Boston crowd more than getting a white dude. So a hundred percent, man. Let's 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 make this happen for the championship run, baby. Let's go. Who is just why it's funny that Pritchard's going? <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I. But I mean, you you, you drafted Olenek ahead of Giannis, yeah. but you drafted and Olenek. now he's balling. So you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta bring him back. You gotta bring him back. It's only right. Yeah, uh, it won't yeah. be the first no. time, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, not at all. They, they they love the guy anyway, so you know for it, sure it, it'd be a welcome sight. Yeah, I, I actually that that's a really good shout. I didn't even consider it just because I wouldn't imagine that you guys would be willing to move Grant Williams, but that opens up oh, a yeah. lot. Um, yeah, they are. 
Kelly, uh, I was going to say, <laughs> funny enough, I was going to say um, Dallas is a, is, a, is a place where they could use him more than oh, sure. they like to admit. Um, so that, that was my idea. Uh, but I actually like yours better. Uh, but I'll say Dallas for me, but he probably ends up staying with the Jazz because I, I think, like yeah. you said, they're gonna they're gonna pair him with uh Van. No, no trade with him exists without Vanderbilt, and right. I don't know if they're willing to let go of of Vanderbilt just yet. Um, right. and then our final one, KD, KD. We had to throw him in there with every. I honestly am super surprised that Kyrie got moved after he requested a trade early on the season two and and it was unequivocal no like that we're not doing that and now Kyrie was moved what reason does he have to not want to be traded now like that's what I don't understand like look at the two players bro look at the two players like KD especially before his injury I'm talking about the injury like that mm-hmm. sideline him now um had Brooklyn rolling. Yeah. And that was without Kyrie at some moments too. Mm-hmm. Um and a whole bunch so of random had, dudes. <laughs> bro, like KD was taking no prisoners. So they're not gonna move him. Yeah. They're not gonna move. What are, what are you gonna move him for? Like you have the leverage. Brooklyn has the leverage in this one. <laughs> they have no incentive to trade him. Like he signed what a three uh three year deal with them. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the what's the reason to move him if you're Brooklyn? If you're I KD, guess the idea is gone. the idea is always going to be is he's going to leave anyway. So let's try to get something for him. And I think you get more with two years left on the deal than you get if this is the last time. Yeah. So that's that's the idea I have. Um, but yeah, it, this was just bait by the way this is to get you to go on a Celtics rant but somehow no. you didn't end up there so no nah, because um, everybody thinks and I hate this narrative that <laughs> bro if we were going to trade J- Jalen Brown for KD we would have done that five years ago yeah it would have happened not tra- already for sure it would have happened already because they're, they're waiting for you to say yes it's not the other way around they're, they're waiting yeah. for the Celtics to say yes. they're not saying yes they're not saying yes, and and the best opportunity to have done that was uh this uh, this off season, yeah. if they were going to do it, right? That was JB's highest like at this point uh, up until this season because he's playing the best ball he's played his career. But that was the point where it was like, okay, if it's going to happen, it might happen here, but I still doubt it. It's not happening. Stop yeah. bringing like everybody needs to stop with this 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 rhetoric and you know especially if Stephen A. Smith is telling you I'm hearing no, bro I hate Stephen A. Smith screaming <laughs> A. Smith just ready to wallow out at any chance given. It's not yeah. happening. Hey, this was fun while it lasted. Shout out to the NBA yeah. man. I honestly feel now that uh, the NFL season is qu- close to being wrapped up that. I'm really looking forward to the second half of the NBA because really the product has been fucking phenomenal. Um, there's been some yeah. injuries since the All Star break, which kind of kind of sucks, right? Like since the mm-hmm. All Star breaks, everything got announced. Obviously, we haven't had it yet, but um, with the selection process, I feel like there's a plague every year where like <laughs> everyone's excited <laughs> about all these All Stars, and then a whole bunch of people get injured. Uh, but you well, can't avoid it. Speak, speaking of though, do you think that Steph Curry? I mean, um, uh. De'Aaron Fox is going to replace Steph Curry, or who do you see doing that? That's a good question, man. Um, honestly, I haven't even gotten a chance to like look at who else is in the running for that because I someone people are he's saying he's not Anthony the first Edwards. name that comes to mind. Yeah, Ed, no. Ed, Edwards Edwards is, should be number one on that list. I have Fox. I have Fox over Edwards. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Especially hey. if we're talking about position, right? We're not at positionless basketball in the all-star game. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's fair. So and it is, yeah, you're right. It's PG for PG. That that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't I was thinking guard. That that's why that's where they got me. Yeah. But yeah, there isn't another PG, right? There there isn't another one that's worthy of that position that didn't get it. Yeah. And 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 honestly, speaking of PG, PG shouldn't have gotten it. Oh. 
how is my question <laughs> how so, like didn't he miss most of the season two right so if you want to say you trade you pull him out for anthony edwards i'm with that a hundred percent paul george should not be an all-star sense. right now i agree pg-13 that was the worst pivot ever i mean i'm glad you came back from your injury strong but dude come on bro come on bro it's certain things are too obvious and those yeah. are the things you should run away from in my opinion yeah.